Hey, what's going on guys? I am Jake from todaysiphone.com and here's the big news this week. Now, you know, seeing as our website is todaysiphone.com, we usually tend to focus on the iPhone mobile aspect of Apple, but that doesn't mean we don't get interested in the Mac aspect when, you know, the opportunity presents itself. And, you know, with this week being all about Macs, we have a bunch of interesting stories for you on the computer side of things. First, as you probably already know, Apple announced some new MacBook Airs. Now as far as design goes, it's basically identical to the previous version with the aluminum unibody design and the tapered thickness down to the end. Uh, one design change though is that we did see the return of the backlit keypad, which I'm sure a lot of people are very happy about. Now, as far as internals go, the Intel i5 processor is now the standard on the computer with an option to upgrade to the dual core i7. What's more, the laptop now comes equipped with Thunderbolt, and uh, this is something that we're going to see on all of Apple's new computers soon. Everything that they announced this week has Thunderbolt, and I'm sure that everything they announce in the future will have Thunderbolt. Yay, Thunderbolt. Now as far as storage goes, you have the option to choose between 64 gigs, 128 gigs, or 256 gigs, and it's all flash storage, which means there's no moving parts and it has super fast startup. Now prices range from $999 to $1699, depending on what configuration you get. So all in all, this isn't anything revolutionary, it's not a huge upgrade, but it does have a couple really cool things that people are sure to be excited about. Now the MacBook Airs weren't the only product announced though. Apple also released an update to their cinema display as well as the Mac Mini. The cinema display is now called the Apple Thunderbolt display, and obviously it comes equipped with Thunderbolt. Now it also has Gig Ethernet, Firewire 800, and USB 2.0 connections. Uh, what's more, it also has a MagSafe connection built in, which means it's super easy and fast to connect your MacBook to the cinema display. Now this 27 inch display is going to run you $999, and you know, while it does look amazing, I'm not really sure if it's worth $1,000. Now moving on, the Mac Mini also got an update this week. Uh, you can now choose between the dual core i5 processor or the quad core i7. The higher end models also come with AMD Radeon HD graphics, which means it's perfect to pair with the new Thunderbolt display. And uh, not surprisingly, it also has a Thunderbolt connection. Prices for the new Mac Mini start at $599 and go up to $999. Now it's important to note that none of the products Apple announced this week have a slot to insert a CD or a DVD or anything. Apple's really trying to push towards the digital downloads and it seems to me at least that they are trying to move away from the discs completely. If I had to guess, I'd say that within a couple of years we won't see any disc slots on any of Apple's computers. Personally, I'm not sure how I feel about this. I mean, digital downloads are fine for things like applications on your iPhone or for, you know, small downloads on your computer, but for the big $500 or $1,000 programs that you're buying or that you would be getting on a disc, I don't know how secure I feel with just having a digital version. You know, having the disc as a backup is always nice and it's reassuring. Uh, so I just want to know how you guys feel about this. Uh, do you agree with me and think that the disc is good to keep as for nothing more than just a backup? Or do you think that we should all really move towards digital downloads only? Let me know your opinion in the comment section down below. Alright, and the final thing Apple released this week was Mac OS X Lion. For those that don't know, Lion is the latest version of the Mac OS X operating system, and it brings a bunch of really cool features like mission control, launch pad, full screen apps, and when you get your hands on it, you'll notice that a lot of it, like the gestures and the icons and the more visual interaction with the computer, is very reminiscent of iOS. So, naturally, we have a ton of coverage on it. Cam has done a comprehensive two-part written review of the Mac OS X software. Uh, part one is gestures, launchpad, and mission control, and part two is mail, safari, and other bits. It's just a bunch of little cool things that he found. So definitely go check those out on the site, link below. And if you want to see Lion in action, I did a hands-on video of just the major features that Apple announced. Uh, that's on our YouTube channel and on our site, link also below. So check that out as well and uh, leave a comment either on the articles, the video, or come back to this video and leave a comment down below letting us know what your experience has been with Lion. You know, did you have problems downloading it? Do you like the new features? Do you hate the new features? Uh, either way, we'd love to know your opinions, so um, write stuff down there. Now personally, I do like Lion. Some of the gestures took some getting used to just because I used the old gestures in Snow Leopard so much. Spaces is a little different, I'm not sure if I like it too much. Uh, there's no more vertical columns, it's just all horizontal and it's one row. It definitely takes some getting used to, but in my opinion, the pros far outweigh the cons. Alright, and let's finish up with a little bit of iPhone news. First, I want to tell you guys about another leaked iPhone 5 picture. Allegedly. 
Now this one is coming out of Apple.pro and uh, they have had some reliable leaks in the past. The 6th generation iPod Nano, the white iPhone 4, but I'm, I'm not sure if I'm buying this latest one. Now the story is that a user on a microblogging site is a tester for Apple devices and he has the iPhone 4... <coughs> and he has the iPhone 4S uh, running Apple's uh, diagnostic software. Now looking at the pictures, it's undeniable that the phone is running Apple's testing software. However, what is far less certain is that this is the next iPhone. It looks exactly the same as the iPhone 4, same screen size, same thickness, same design. Apparently it has the same 5 megapixel camera. So take this as you will, but in my opinion, this is not the iPhone 5. Alright, and finally, I want to tell you guys about a really cool video that Daniel did this week. We've shown you a ton of awesome things in iOS 5, whether it's Notification Center or Wi-Fi Sync or any of the other features. There's definitely a lot to love in the latest iteration of iOS, but this week Daniel takes a look at some of the stuff that isn't so great. Now bear in mind that these aren't bugs in the software because we know that it's a beta and it's going to have some bugs. Uh, what he's looking at are features, things that Apple has deliberately done that maybe could have been done better or implemented in a different way. Uh, it's really interesting and gives a different perspective on iOS 5, so I definitely think it's worth taking a look at. He makes a bunch of really good points. Uh, you can check that out on our YouTube channel or on todaysiphone.com. Link, of course, is below. Okay, well that's all the big news for this week, guys. Thank you very much for watching. Uh, keep in mind that the links to all of these stories I talked about in this video are in the description down below. So go check those out if you feel like it. And uh, if you have anything to say to me, comments, questions, suggestions, or you just want to chat, uh, you can follow me on Twitter at TIPJake. I try to answer everybody that tweets me, except the creepy ones. You know who you are. So if you have something to say, the best place to do it is there. And uh, don't forget, for more news, views, and reviews, definitely head over to todaysiphone.com.